Hey, Andrew, welcome to The Market is Open. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Today, we're going to be talking about uh, hydrogen. We're going to have a little bit of a debate between uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. It's been a heated topic ever since, I think, well, for a long time, but it's been uh, more popular with the Nikola IPO, I think, and you know some of these hydrogen stocks are, are going up. Uh, and we're going to debate that between uh, battery. We think, uh, I mean, I'm going to take the side of battery, and Josh is going to take the side of hydrogen, and we're going to talk about uh, you know some of the pros and cons of each type of technology. Yeah, sounds good. So yeah, we've seen a bunch of stocks. So Nikolai, or I can't, I, I never know how to say the name. I guess Nikola. Um, I think you could say it both ways, but that stock is at some ridiculous valuation of 20 billion. And then I'm reading Toyota has a fuel cell truck that they're talking about. I'm sure they're in the same progress as Nikolai, um, Nikola, whatever. And the value of the whole Toyota company is 200 billion. And then you mentioned some hydrogen stocks have gone up a lot, like Plug. Uh, I don't know if the plug rally is because of Nikola, so maybe people started looking at hydrogen more closely. But if you look at plug stock, it's up. It was at five dollars. Now it's at seven. And I think we need to sort of uh, separate the debate. And the debate sort of started on our channel. We have a video: Can Nikola compete with Tesla? They have two different technologies. What we didn't get with Nikola, and why we don't think it can compete, is why they're developing both technologies when every auto company is focused on one. We don't think that makes a lot of sense. But we were wondering more for the hydrogen technology. So even though we don't have a lot of confidence in Nikola. Uh, we wanted to debate if that technology makes sense. And sort of one of the reason why I think hydrogen makes sense, and I'm going to take that side, is like um, looking at this. So we see the energy consumption across the world right now is mostly in oil. So most of the oil, most of the energy used across the world on every single day is oil energy, which means most of the energy used is in cars. I think 50% of oil energy is used in cars. So we have a lot of energy that we need to be replaced. And then going forward 2050, the IEA, then we're going to need something from the grid replacing that. So we're going to need some other energy source replacing that completely, which will probably be renewables, right? Yes. My point is, okay, so if we, if we start using renewables, we're going to want to extract as much renewable energy as we can. So we have solar and wind making our renewable energy. I believe these are the only good renewable energy. And then what I would argue is it also makes sense to store excess energy in hydrogen. And if you're a utility company, you, you do electrolysis to get, make hydrogen, you separate the hydrogen, and then you store it into a tank. And my argument is a tank, which is just some steel, should be cheaper than a battery, which has a lot of pieces in it. Uh, right now, a Tesla battery has the biggest battery on their Model S is what, 100 kilowatts? And how many uh, batteries do you have? You have 100,000 batteries or a lot of batteries? Yeah, I don't know. It's probably like 6,000 something. I don't remember the exact Yeah, number. so my logic would be it should be cheaper to store hydrogen, which has very few moving pieces. You might need some sensors to ever see if there's a leak. You might see, need some mechanisms to, if there is a leak, to diffuse. And I know that has been in hydrogen, but I think those sort of sensors are in batteries too, because you also don't want to make sure a battery overheats and you want to make sure, you know, something goes down. So I don't think there'd be so much more sensors in hydrogen. So I think it would make sense in the future to store the excess energy in hydrogen, um, just because if you're running your wind turbines all night, you're going to make excess energy. Let's say that even if uh, hydrogen, the argument against hydrogen is it's less efficient, which means that it takes, let's say you run your um, wind turbine for three hours. If you had batteries, you would get three times as much energy as hydrogen. But since the energy is infinite and the storage cost is cheaper, you don't really care that you would get three times as much energy as batteries. You really care what's cheaper to store. And at the end of the day, you're just happy that you get to store this one kilogram or amount of free energy. And then you see what is cheaper to store my energy overnight. You see it's hydrogen and then you use hydrogen. So that's my argument. And your argument is I'd rather store that excess energy in batteries. Uh, yeah, okay. So if we're talking about utilities, I guess, we're gonna start with utilities. Um, then yeah, I have a couple arguments like where, so right now they have hydrogen tanks. I think the Toyota Mirai is like an actual car that you can probably buy for like 60,000 or something, but they have a, a tank that they test like crazy where they light it on fire, you know, put it in a, throw it in a bonfire to see what happens because if that blows up, like there's no more car, the car is gone. It's storing 122 liters of like hydrogen, which is five kilograms of hydrogen. Uh, I think when we were in science class, uh, one of our professors lit up a balloon, which is about one gram of hydrogen, and that exploded everywhere. So like it just makes a big sound and it, it like catches fire. So what you need is a giant storage tank that's very, very safe. 
And I think that's one of the, the problems for, for vehicles is that as soon as one of them blows up, the media is going to be all over that and nobody's going to want to drive a hydrogen car ever again. And for, I, uh, I agree. I wouldn't, I'm, I wouldn't really want to drive a hydrogen car. So I think the argument against hydrogen cars is pretty strong. Oh, uh, so I don't, yeah, I just think I don't want to argue that hydrogen cars are necessarily good, though I'm willing to keep an open mind. So sorry, you can continue. Well, so for a utility, you need a giant tank. And when things get uh, larger... Like they need to be designed differently. If you were just to take a little balloon, it's very thin. The, you know, the, the, the rubber of the balloon or whatever is, is very thin. Whereas if you had a giant balloon, the, the outside needs to be a lot thicker. Even it's just bigger. It's holding the, you know, just more, more uh, gas or whatever's inside the balloon. So you would need a much thicker tank, especially if you're compressing it at 10,000 PSI. So it needs to be very strong. And so that's, that's one of the major problems. And I think we were looking at, like in, in the case of a utility, we're storing hydrogen hundreds of or hundred meters underground. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that's, it's just hard to, to manage that and maintain that. And you need to monitor it. And like, if anything happens, uh, it's all the hydrogen is not just going to go into the atmosphere and everybody's going to be safe. Like it's going to take time for it to, you know, flow up a hundred meters, like this giant pool of hydrogen. Uh, like if, if a fire occurs in the rare scenario, like if that ever happens, that's just, it's not very safe in my opinion. I mean, people will say that it's safe, but it, but it also has other, like that's extremely expensive to, to dig a hole. It's sort of like the reverse of oil before we were extracting it. Now we're trying to shove hydrogen back underneath the ground and that's, that's expensive. I guess like my argument was it seems cheaper. Like, so if we, I think in our study, it says like 50 petawatts or something can be stored in these under underground mines. And I didn't really want to talk about mines. I'd rather talk about a more proven technology. Let's just pretend like pretend it's a big thing of metal, but, but yeah. Yeah. But like for now we can just think about like a big thing of metal. Like I would just think I could store one megawatt of power in a big metal tank cheaper than I could if I had to do batteries because with the model S the biggest battery that's hundreds of thousands of batteries in this case, I just need one tank. And as I said, we don't even have to consider the efficiency because let's say if the battery was more efficient, then the battery would have to be, let's say, uh, would capture one megawatt of energy. Let's say the high, we lose a bit of energy on the way back, we could store 30% more hydrogen, right? So then we, we know no. we're going to lose. Wait a minute. You would need uh, 30% or three times I'm just making, more. I'm just making up a, a number. No, no. Okay. But we already said that energy was free overnight. We have an unlimited source of energy. So we don't, so we need three times. So we have to run our machine for three hours overnight to get the same as the battery. But because the energy is infinite, we don't really care. We only can only store so much hydrogen at this moment. So we don't really care that we run it three times as long to get that, let's say one kilogram of hydrogen. And then to convert it back, we actually go, we're going to store a bit more than a kilogram just because when we convert it back, we're going to lose some energy in the process. So let's say one kilogram of hydrogen produces 33 kilowatt hours or of, of energy. So in this case, you would need 99 kilograms of hydrogen to get to one mega pack. But let's say because an electri- electrolyzer is less efficient, you need to store instead of 33, you need to store, let's say 40% more than that. I'm just making up a number. I know it's around that number. So you, instead of storing 99 kilograms, you store 140 kilograms of hydrogen, knowing that you're going to lose 40% when you convert it back. But I would still think storing 140 kilograms of hydrogen in a tank would be cheaper than storing, buying a, a mega pack where you have to have thousands and thousands of batteries. So that's, that would be my argument. You mentioned infinite energy earlier, uh, which is true. Like the sun comes up every day. However, uh, you would need like three times as many solar panels in order to get the, the same power because hydrogen is so inefficient. You need more ways to generate uh, the same amount of, of energy. So actually you need more, more, more energy generation mechanisms due to hydrogen's inefficiency in order to get that same type of energy that you would get from electricity because you're storing electricity very efficiently uh, inside batteries. We're, we're thinking that there's going to be a large excess of hydrogen and we're going to need all this storage space. And, uh, you know, so we actually, we have no hydrogen today. So we're actually not going to be producing hydrogen even fast enough. We're going to be consuming it faster than we produce it. And therefore, the, the fact that it's cheap to store or whatnot is, is a little bit irrelevant because, because we're using it faster than we can produce it. So the, we're not even going to get to excess capacity until, you know, 50 years from now or something because we're not, we're not even close to where oil is. So therefore, uh, w- the question is how much can we produce and use right away? And the purpose of the batteries is to simply 
uh, manage the fluctuations in the, the grid network. And I think uh, building up this entire hydrogen in infrastructure to do that is just going to be significantly more expensive and inefficient compared to batteries. The, the simple thing about batteries is that you just plop them in and you sort of plug them in to the, to the grid. They're, they're not that hard to assemble. I, I believe Tesla did their giant mega pack thing in, in South Australia in 60 days. So it's extremely simple and easy. You just mm -hmm. simply add it on. The batteries are just on top of the land. Whereas if you're going to do that same thing with hydrogen, uh, you need to start digging holes and generating these giant tanks. And uh, you, know, you, you have electrolysis machines, but you also need the, uh, the proton electron mem membranes to convert it back to electricity. Those are super expensive. So there's, there's all these different parts. Sure. For, sure. For I guess like, I guess, yeah, my point would be if those capital costs go down, which I think they would, um, if the electrolyzer, electro, like the electrolysis costs, like the actual costs, which is the big limitation in our, in my view in the future, if you have infinite energy, that cost, which is what's holding back hydrogen is not an issue because you have infinite electricity. So it's only really the capital cost of the electrolyzer, electrolyzer versus batteries, which you have much, much more pieces. You have to you're just going to need a lot more battery units than you would for the electrolyzer machine, which to me, the overall system should be cheaper, I would think over time um, than the battery system. Um, but for sure, batteries are ahead today. Well, hydrogen, I can see in the future utility companies just because of the cheap cost of storage. Yeah, uh, let us know uh, what you guys think in the comments section below and please uh, subscribe and like our video. Thanks so much for watching.